May I welcome you all to Friendship Parish Church. I'm Charles Sugden, Rector here, and thank you for coming. Thank you, choir, for being here, and our organist today, Tim. I'm going to begin with a prayer shortly, but I, I just wanted to say an obvious welcome to Sally and Caroline and Andre, Esty, Jeremy, and um, then to uh, sisters Vivienne and Jill. I'll find you later on. You find me and we'll introduce ourselves to each other. And then, of course, nephews Ian and Andrew and Neil and Paul and niece Nikki. I don't know whether you've all made it here, but you let me know later on. And we have a cousin, Diane, who is helping to lead today. Diane Yendel will be giving the eulogy and the reading and also leading the prayer. So thank you, Diane, who's um, a lay reader with the oh, LLM with Holy Trinity Church in uh, West Brion Trim. Other cousins include, if I've got you all right here, Judith, David, Mark, Sarah, Michael, Tom, and Diana. Any others? Uh, if I've left you out and you're really, apologies. Um, welcome everybody here today. Well, Ralph died on the 20th of December and went to be with his Lord in the twinkling of an eye. But grief affects us all differently. And what I do know is that there's a great deal of fondness for Ralph, and that's here today. So thank you for bringing that with you. And we celebrate Ralph's great life today. We come together to thank God, to place Ralph in his hands, to pray with those who mourn, and to say our goodbyes in the best way possible. So let us pray. Merciful Father, hear our prayers and comfort us. Renew our trust in your Son, whom you raised from the dead. Strengthen our faith that all who have died in the love of Christ will share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I hope you've all managed to get sight of one of these lately delivered orders of service and we're going to sing Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. So please stand and we sing together.
seated. Welcome everybody from the family and thank you Sir Charles for that wonderful welcome and trying to name all the family. I am in fact the eldest of Ralph's nephew, nephews and nieces and it's my very great privilege to read this eulogy on behalf of Sally and Caroline. But as Ralph has been there for the whole of my life, the whole of my life, I've added a few memories of my own, with of course Sally and, and Caroline's permission. Yes, Jeremy. Yes. <laughs> Ralph Dennis Thomas was born in Whitehall, Bristol, on the 4th of June, 1928. The middle child of five siblings. He went to Whitehall Primary School, and he was 11 years old when the Second World War began and was evacuated to St Austell in Cornwall. And there he stayed with a very kind postmaster and his wife, but he had to come back to Bristol to take his 11 plus. And some of us still remember 11 pluses. <laughs> and he passed, which was brilliant and then went to Cotton Grammar School. After grammar school, he joined the Royal West of England Academy School of Architecture in Great George Street, and there he qualified as an architect. His first job was with the Co-op Architects Department. Now, this is where I'm gonna slightly diverse. Those of you who remember or have been in Bristol a long time, will remember Fairfax House. Yes, a few nods. Which was the co-op's flagship store on what is now the site of the galleries. And Ralph had a lot to do with the planning and the design of that building. And it was a, quite a difficult task because, as some of you know, the River Froome runs right the way underneath the site. And at that time, I was doing my O-level art and Uncle Raf helped me to do a project based on this. In fact, I was so enthused that for a time, I too wanted to become an architect. But in the end, it was my brother David <laughs> who followed his uncle into the world of architecture. In 1963, Ralph's father, my granddad, he died. And Ralph, although he wasn't the eldest of the siblings, assumed the head of the family. Over the years, he became an important source of advice to myself and my cousins and all the family. Also in 1963, he went to work at the City Architects Department on College Green, in what some of us used to call the Council House. And that's where he first met Sally. <laughs> Romance blossomed, and they were married on July the 31st, 1965, at Winterbourne Parish Church. A few years later, he moved to work for the then Southwest Regional Health Authority, where he designed clinics and hospital buildings. And these included part of the rebuilt Bristol Eye Hospital, parts of Gloucester Royal Hospital, and health centres in the Forest of Dean. In 1971, Ralph and Sally joined Pippin Jay down in the city centre where Ralph's parents had been married in 1917 and all their children had been baptised there. They loved it there and both asked Jesus into their hearts. Ralph was such an evangelist and loved sharing his faith with everybody that he met, seeing many friends give their lives to Jesus. In 1980, 
Caroline was born. And the family enjoyed many holidays in Devon, Switzerland, Guernsey, Scotland and Wales. Despite him protesting that he didn't like animals, Caroline persuaded him that having a pet was a good thing. And he ended up with lots of pets, yes. <laughs> Spending time teaching a budgie how to talk building a rabbit and a guinea pig run in the garden. Yes, <laughs> cleaning out fish tanks and standing in the garden teaching Caroline's pet pigeon how to fly as it returned back to him every day to land on his head. <laughs> Ralph was so proud of Caroline, her job as a midwife and of how she went on to Madagascar to work as a missionary and set up a children's centre. Ralph was so happy to become a granddad to Andre and Esther and Jeremiah. And he loved his grandchildren so much. He, he loved playing board games with Andre, singing with Esther and reading to Jeremiah. In his later years, Ralph enjoyed going to Frenchy Church and became part of this local community. Ralph always spoke fondly of heaven and how much he looked forward to being with his saviour. He often used to say, I do hope that people won't be sad saying goodbye to my earthly body because I won't be there. I will be in my new heavenly body and will be rejoicing. If I had an old clapped out car and it finally stopped and I stepped into a brand new car and drove off, why would everyone gather around the old car sadly? <laughs> I'm not there. I'm in my new heavenly body with no pain, no suffering and no tears. Although we as a family are sad to say goodbye to Ralph and we'll miss him so much, we also know that he is happy in heaven and we will see him again. Sorry, I should have had all my papers with me, shouldn't I? I'm going to read a passage from John's Gospel in chapter 14. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If, I were, if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks so much, Diane. And it's just lovely in several aspects to have a colleague who I haven't met before about a month ago um, leading part of this service. And also in that first hymn, just to be reminded that um, there are many here who are familiar with that passage that we've just heard read and who know its truth. And then there are those 
who have heard that passage probably several times, but haven't yet been able to subscribe to it. And so I'm addressing you. I'm addressing those who are watching this later. And thanks to my wife, this is being filmed. And so welcome aboard. I'm sorry I didn't give the initial welcome if you are watching this later at home. There are some who would have loved to have been here, but just couldn't uh, make it on this occasion today. So it's a great joy and a privilege to be able to give testimony today to what Ralph held dear. And I have met Ralph on a number of occasions at his home, at both the houses, uh, at um, church here. And um, he's been a great encouragement to me personally in my ministry, although it's been short times that we've had together. What Ralph held dear um, was the best news ever to arrive on earth. And um, in one way, it's the good old story, the same gospel that is read and preached every Sunday in faithful, loving churches throughout the world and among still others on other days of the week too. Just to remind you that Ralph would often carry cards which he himself had designed in his top pocket. And on these cards were illustrations of the good news, which he would offer to anybody as he had opportunity. So although naturally a quiet man, he was an ardent evangelist. More than that, when an appeal was made from the front of church at Pippin Jay's, I'm told that Ruth would be, uh, Ralph would be in charge of assigning to those who came forward the most suitable Christian believer to come alongside them, to counsel them and pray with them. So he was, in this way, a doorkeeper. Now, elsewhere in John's Gospel, we heard from that a moment ago, Diane read from that Gospel, Jesus said, I am the door of the sheep. In a way, his words, I am the way and the truth and the life, no one comes to me, uh, no one comes to the Father except through me. Is Jesus saying the, the same thing? I am the door of the sheep. I could come from the text, I am the way and the truth and the life, from the angle of, well, the way? What about Buddha, Muhammad and all of that? Why is it? How can it be that Jesus claims to be the way? I would be happy to follow up with anybody who'd like um, to do that with, with me or any other Christian who um, is here. But today, we're laying Ralph's mortal remains to the earth, and Ralph would want us to know how it is that he, Ralph, in his soul and spirit, is not in that coffin, but is in the presence of his Saviour and uh, many of our Saviours in heaven. And this is the best news that ever hit the earth. Three things. One... God loves us so much that he sent Jesus. Two, Jesus loves us so much that he not only died for us, but rose again in power. And three, the spirit, that is our spirit, was not designed to be filled with rottenness and selfishness and the things of death and darkness, but to be filled with God's spirit, the spirit of life, the spirit of Jesus Christ. So there we have it. God sending himself in Jesus. God himself loving us in those acts of Jesus, as well as his words. And us being able to receive Jesus. And that is the good news. And um, that is available for everybody all the time. Our reading 
has a context. Jesus was preparing his disciples for his departure. Yes, for his death. He was actually offering them comfort by saying, this is not the end of the road. You know the place where I am going, Jesus said to them. How can we know that? Thomas asked. Then Jesus made this reply. Haven't you known me? Don't you know me now? And he says to you uh, and to me, when you become my friend and believe in me, then I come to live in you. My spirit is living in you. And this is the guarantee of your life forever with God. Physical death, not any danger, not any fear can separate you from my love and my presence. So Jesus is the door and it's an open door for all who wish to, to come in. You can do this privately, like another figure in John's Gospel, Nicodemus, and eventually it'll come out. You can do this more publicly, and many of you have done that. But I'd encourage, if anybody's fearful today, if any lack assurance of where you would be if you died today or tomorrow, well, take Ralph's assurance. Take my assurance that is the assurance offered by Jesus in the gospel. Having given everything for you in love, will you open the door of your heart? Will you go through the door of faith that is Jesus? Come to him. Amen. And we now have that super hymn, Amazing Grace. Please stand to sing.
you sit, please, for our prayers? Heavenly Father, you promised eternal life to those who believe. Remember for good this your servant Ralph, as we remember him. Bring all to who rest in Christ into the fullness of your kingdom, where sins have been forgiven and death is no more. Merciful Father and Lord of all life, we praise you that we are made in your image and reflect your truth and your light. We thank you for the life of your child, Ralph, for the love that he received from you and showed amongst us. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all your servants living and departed, that we shall rise again at the coming of Christ. And we ask that in due time we may share with our brother Ralph that clearer vision when we shall see your face in the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O oh God, we offer you the future it has changed because Ralph is no longer with us and we feel uncertain and diminished. Yet you will not fail us. You still have gifts for us to receive, work for us to do, discoveries of your unfailing grace for us to make. And at the last you will reunite us with those who have gone home before us in the new life of your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Living God, you have lit the day with the sun's light and the midnight with shining stars. Lighten our hearts with the bright beams of the sun of righteousness risen with healing in his wings, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so preserve us in the doing of your will, that at last we may shine as the stars forever, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And let us join in saying the prayer that Jesus taught us, and you have the words on your service sheet. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God of mercy, entrusting into your hands all that you have made and rejoicing in our communion with all your faithful people, we make our prayers through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. We're going to have the commendation and a hymn and um, then a blessing before we leave this building and go out and, and gather around the graveside if we are able to and wish to do that. Um, after uh, all of that, and we've spent the time we want to spend at the graveside, you're all very welcome at Bedbrook Social Club. And if you don't know where that is, lots of people here do. So please just find somebody who does. On the back of the order of service is actually a postcode. Um, and uh, ask around there on the main road on the left-hand side, going down towards the city. Uh, also... On the bottom floor here is a box which 
will contain any donations people wish to make to Barnabas Fund. And the details are on the back. It's uh, exciting that we've got such a link with Madagascar in Caroline and her work. And um, this food programme going for those who are needy in Madagascar and South Africa, I commend it to you. So that'll be around for a while um, if you're able to give either on your way out from the chapel, um, as it is called, um, or um, after the graveside service, it'll be there for a few more minutes for you to place your donation. Would you please now stand? Let us commend Ralph to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. God, our Creator and Redeemer, by your power, Christ conquered death and entered into glory, confident of his victory and claiming his promises. We entrust Ralph to your mercy in the name of Jesus our Lord, who died and is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn now, Great is Thy Faithfulness on the Order of Service.
comfort and his peace, his light and his joy, in this world and the next, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among each one of us, those whom we love, today and always. Amen. Amen.